Thank you for being with us. It's obviously very interesting and also very useful. Uh, let me follow up on the question from our chair. Uh, in fact, your presentation makes a reference that you discourage us from even recommending some form of identification. I think uh, you, 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 and I think your argument is is that we pre your, your argument is well. It's always visible. You're right. The chain is very visible, but what you don't see in a chain is who's behind the chain, mm -hmm. and that is why I presume uh, people of what illegal objectives means are are prepared to use it as they apparently are using this mechanism to um, to basically transfer money and, and launder money. I gather your argument is that I recognize that that is a negative, but please don't don't hesitate with that issue. Don't put measures in place to restrict that flow, because the the usefulness of those measures identifying who's behind the transfers is lesser than the use to our society from letting this thing develop. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Because because the chain is visible, but not the identity of the persons, which is what I think the chairman was asking. I'm recognizing two aspects. One, that um, attempts at imposing identity on Bitcoin will, in my opinion, be ineffective, because there will always be channels by which non-identifiable transactions can be introduced, either in Bitcoin or other currencies, will simultaneously remove one of the main advantages. Senator, today I've received three phone calls, automated phone calls, from uh, visa fraud prevention, because I used my card in Canada. Uh, they've been calling me all day. And this is something that happens to me every time I travel, and is a symptom of the fact that by releasing an identifier that allows others to pull from my account, and that ties every transaction I do to every activity I do, um, I am not only giving up my privacy, but endangering my personal financial security every time I use a credit card. This system is non-viable. I uh, watch every uh, few weeks on the news that yet another group has had 50 million consumer credit cards and identities lost. And for the average consumer, that means months of identity protection and risk. These are the intermediaries who handle our identities. And what we have seen over the last two decades is that protecting information security systems in such a way that we can prevent these types of thefts is not possible. The mistake is tying identity to every transaction and creating systems that can continuously draw from our accounts. Bitcoin is fundamentally different, and to break that in order to tie an identity that anyone can easily bypass if they have ill, um, Ill intent uh, would not result in protecting us more, but it would result in harming consumers. But conclusion being is that you acknowledge that this form of of system could encourage money laundering, but you're arguing is that you acknowledge that, but please don't do anything about it because the benefits for society from this form of transfer is more important. Is that your argument in Prince? I gather that's what you're saying. My argument is that the invention of blockchain technologies actually allows any of these systems to be used for ill intent without identity. And there's nothing that can be done to stop someone from using it. Or should them. even try to stop it. I think that that would harm the vast majority okay. of people who do good with it. Okay, I know. Now, let me talk to you about, you know, I guess we're a little bit older than you are, but and, and every time we achieve certain points in life, if you look, I look at central banks, because that's, I guess, we're banking committee, they come across with new theories every 20, 30 years about either money supply or money growth or control inflation, that's all, or control currency. And we always learn 30, 40 years later, well, sorry, we got it wrong. And then things like shit happens, in other words. So having said that, when I look at your algorithm, and you sort of say, we're going to predict the necessary growth of this currency, it's a form of transfer, and we got it right. But I highly suspect 20, 30 years from I said, well, you didn't get it right. Now, clue me in. What's the one or two things you got wrong when you say that, when you so when you project the future? Where's the two things of weakness you say, I could have got it wrong, and here's where I may have gotten wrong? I think what's useful to understand is that uh, Bitcoin's monetary policy is just one recipe that is possible. And what Bitcoin and other currencies like that allow us is to implement monetary recipes at will, and then fix them in place for each one of these currencies. And if Bitcoin's monetary recipe is wrong, 
people will move to another currency that has the same characteristics of decentralized organization, but with a different monetary recipe. It is simply one of the possible choices. I don't know if it is right or wrong, but I do know what it's going to be in 30 years exactly for Bitcoin. I can tell you to the to the millionth uh, decimal point exactly how many currency units will exist in 140 years from now in Bitcoin. And so what it provides, whether you like that recipe or not, whether you agree with it or not, it provides certainty, it provides predictability, and it allows people to adjust their expectations for that. Whether that's the right monetary policy or not, well, with this new model, you can build your own currency, which has a different monetary policy, and if it's better, it gets to win. It's but an open competition. The supply is defined, given the algorithm formula. But people like our chairman would, would buy have bought this, this unit, so maybe the supply is limited. But it will it be equal to the demand growth? Who knows? And therefore, knows. that price of that currency may fluctuate immensely if you, if you got that wrong. Because obviously, the purpose of the algorithm is to project as reasonable as it can that future growth. But it may not be. So maybe the supply is defined, but not the price. And therefore, if you get high fluctuation of value, it's going to discourage its use. Absolutely. I think at the moment, volatility is a reflection of very low liquidity in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin has a very specific recipe, and that recipe is to simulate the supply curve of a precious metal like gold. And that is a very specific monetary theory. Now, um, if there is a different monetary theory, you can build a different currency using blockchain technology. You could even build a blockchain technology currency where monetary supply is defined by a committee of 12 central bankers, and then invite users to adopt that. It would still be more transparent than our current system of money. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.